Good morning, folks. We've got a number of new papers. We're going to answer some of your questions from last night's special video, which we hope you saw. And we are starting with our star. And although we find the last 24 hours on the sun were relatively quiet with minor motions and pops at the limb, we're officially on watch for the incoming active regions. While the sunspots on the disk are small and disorganized heading towards the limb, the northern sunspot group just crested over the limb into view at the edge there. It is back from the far side and in 171 angstroms, which reveals the ionized iron much higher into the corona, we can see the massive umbral fields on the south too. The huge bands coming up from that group are extending so high, the outer edges are outside the visibility of the satellite. Eyes on those areas to see if they're still active today as they turn in to face Earth. Let's start the science articles nice and easy with another hint that the modern story of the atmosphere needs to change. They found significant temperature swings independent of Antarctic temperatures, or Heinrich events. This tends to challenge the dominance of CO2 in that temperature story and the story of how CO2 exchange between the Southern Ocean and the atmosphere has played out over time. In the climate realm as well, here I was made aware of this book yesterday. Dr. Coonan is very highly respected and this is a swipe with spikes at the standard climate narrative, especially in how it deviates from what the science actually tells them. Minor note up next. Since this great 2014 study on oxygen loss and geomagnetic reversal driven extinctions, the specific field has been relatively quiet on the matter. While much more restricted to a modern, minor event, studies like this one help us understand how the top of the sky really works, including in the major space energy interactions. Identification of one of the catastrophic flooding events in the Younger Dryas, nothing surprising about that, but in line with the concept that the isotope evidence is tricking the bejesus out of them in the minutiae the fine details. They say they can't tell if this occurred near the beginning of the Younger Dryas or not. It likely did, but in the Americas, the isotopes are trickier than for any other place in the world for the last 12,000 year cycle event. Folks, this last paper today will help us answer one of your questions from last night's video, and it's a great segue into those questions. The paper described the short-term strong disruptions that occur within a larger geomagnetic storm event and how the induced electric current is affected by those disruptions to the field in the ionosphere, often associated with nighttime perturbation events. And that goes to the first of the top three questions from last night's comment section. No, this is not a day side versus night side thing. When it comes to the weather effects, Yes, there is a sun-facing atmospheric electric effect on clouds and water vapor, but the currents induced by solar storms indeed go round the world. It's how induction works all the way around the coil. There were a lot of questions about protecting items from the surge and some trolls spamming the page with nonsense about it as well. But remember, the telegraph machines in 1859 were unplugged. They still caught fire. And right now we've got less protection with Earth's magnetic shield fading. Yes, folks. If it is right on the line of being a kill shot, you may be able to protect some small things, but in the big one, no, not a chance. Lastly, from the comment questions yesterday, a previous answer addresses this last one. The 1859 event is expected to occur every 150 to 200 years. We are within that timeline, 162 years from the last one, but that was with Earth's field up at near peak strength. It wouldn't take one that big to do it today, but now, temper that realization, because the number one question that came in via email was about the 25% chance I had previously estimated that we were going to take the solar kill shot this sunspot cycle over the next four or five years. People wanted to know if that's changed. Well, maybe, but maybe not. We knew the sun would be firing these blasts. We told you for years Zarkova was wrong and this will not be grand solar minimum yet. And whatever the number is, I promise it's under 50%. I do still believe we're going to make it through this sunspot cycle, and I do still have faith in the Earth-facing solar quiet, and in other things. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.